So you have a little bit of money that you want to invest, but you're not sure how to do it. You want that money to make more money for you, but at the same time, you don't want to lose your hard earned money. Stocks, bonds, real estate, Forex, crypto, it all seems so confusing and you're not sure what to do. Well, don't worry, this video is for you as I'm going to break down how to invest for beginners. So first, let's just talk about what is investing and why you need to invest. Let's say you have a couple thousand dollars in the bank account, for example. You've worked hard for that money and you saved it up and you're putting it in the bank account to be safe. However, you don't realize that you're actually losing money. There's something called the time value of money. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Especially with inflation being so out of control over the last few years, if you had tucked away $1,000 in a bank account back in 2020, it's really only worth about $840 today. What I'm talking about is the purchasing power of that dollar has decreased over the years. So the basic principle of investing is putting your money into a vehicle or an asset, whether that be a physical asset like real estate or gold, or a digital asset like crypto or stocks. And you hope that over time, that asset will grow in value and make you money. The whole reason you need to invest is not only to make money, but also to protect your hard earned money so you're not losing money over time due to the time value of money and due to inflation. However, not every investment is the same. Each investment has a different level of risk and the mistake many people make is they just compare the returns of different investments without calculating the risk of each investment. For example, people might see that Dogecoin made a thousand percent returns while real estate only made 30 to 40 percent returns during the boom of 2021. However, in order to compare the investments equally, you need to adjust each investment to the same risk basis. Risk adjusted returns is a way to measure and compare returns on the same playing field by adjusting for risk in the credit, the market, the operations, etc. It takes into account operational risk like system failure risk, employee risk, managerial problems, human error, unforeseen market conditions for that specific business. And the most common way to calculate this is the formula called the Sharpe Ratio. Essentially, with this formula, you get a ratio that you can apply to all the returns on the investment to level out the playing field and see what the true return is after adjusting for risk. So the Sharpe Ratio is the return of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio's excess return. Don't worry if that sounds super complicated. All you need to know is the higher the Sharpe Ratio, the better. So for example, if there's an investment for crypto and it's projecting 100% returns, and then there's an investment in real estate projecting 20% returns, you have to apply the Sharpe Ratio to each one to get a balanced, even playing field to compare the two options. For example, crypto is highly volatile and highly risky. It could have a Sharpe Ratio of 0.2, while real estate is a much more secure and stable asset, could have a sharp ratio of 1.2. What that means is if the crypto fund is projecting 100% return, that means if you invest $1,000, you should be projected $1,000 extra on profit. However, you multiply that $1,000 profit by 0.2, which is the sharp ratio, and now adjust it for the risk, and you can expect to get a return of actually $200, not $1,000. On the other hand, if the real estate investment is offering a 20% return, and you're investing $1,000 as well, you're thinking you're gonna get a $200 return. However, multiply that by the 1.2 sharp ratio, and it's actually gonna project a $240 return because you're adjusting for the risk. So while on the surface, a $1,000 return on your $1,000 investment in the crypto fund looks way more appealing than a $200 return on your $1,000 investment in the real estate fund, after you adjust the sharp ratio for risk, it's actually a better investment in the real estate fund because risk adjusted, your returns is $240 versus just $200 for the crypto fund. However, don't worry too much about it right now as you're a beginner. Just keep in mind that every investment has different risk levels and you have to make sure you adjust and take into account the risk of losing your money and not just the money you could make. For me, I'm a real estate guy and I admit I was super jealous during the crypto craze in 2021, but when everything came crashing back down, I was so glad I was in real estate. So now let's talk about the actual types of investing. There's two ways to invest, the slow and safe approach and the fast and more risky approach. And ideally a mix of both is what you want in order to meet your goals. So the first way to invest is the slow and safe approach. These are relatively safe investments and they're pretty much passive. You don't have to spend time or energy managing the investments. Normally these are investments like mutual funds, bonds, passively investing as a limited partner in a real estate syndication, private lending, or owning real estate notes. So most people have heard of mutual funds and bonds, but I'm gonna go over them really quick in case you haven't. 
So bonds can be issued by the government or private companies, and they usually pay a fixed interest rate. The market value of the bond itself can change over time due to market conditions, but it's a relatively stable investment. Bonds of higher quality, like a strong government or a strong company, are going to pay a lower interest rate, while more risky bonds are going to have a higher interest rate. Also, bonds that are in shorter length and time have lower interest rates, while longer term bonds have higher interest rates as well. So for example, if you buy a bond from the US government, depending on the length of the bond, right now current interest rates as of this video is about 4-5%. to So if you invested $1,000, you'd be making $40-50 to a year, which is a few bucks a month, as you can see that doesn't really do anything. In my opinion, bonds are for people that have a ton of money already, and they just want to diversify and park their money somewhere to make a small return. Next is mutual funds. Mutual funds is a diversified mix of stocks, bonds, and money markets. It's all managed by a professional, so it's all hands-off and hassle-free as an investment. Also, you can choose which mutual funds you want to invest in depending on your level of risk. The benefit is that it's truly passive, but the downside is you have no control over the mutual fund. Mutual funds, like bonds, have pretty low returns, think about 7 to 8% on average. So once again, if you invest a thousand bucks, that's 70 or 80 bucks a year, or a few bucks a month. Once again, not life-changing, but very safe and hands-off way to make some money. Now let's talk about some alternative investments and still being a safe approach to investing. One is investing as a limited partner in a real estate syndication. Have you ever driven by those large apartment complexes with pools, gyms, and a lot of amenities? Or maybe you've rented one before or live in one right now. There's a very high chance that apartment complex is owned by a real estate syndication. What a real estate syndication is, it's a group of investors or general partners that find these deals, they fund the deals by raising money from investors and from getting loans, and then they operate and manage the property. Since normally these purchases are tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, they raise a lot of money from investors where you can invest as a private or silent partner. And the best part about this investment is that the silent partners also get ownership of the actual property. Normally they get 60 to 80% of the ownership, while the general partners get 20 to 40% of the ownership. Most syndications target an annual cash on cash return of 7 to 8% and an internal rate of return of about 15 to 20% over the life of the investment. If you don't know what an IRR is, don't really worry about it. It's basically just your annual return on your capital, but they factor in the time value of the money as well and opportunity cost. Since you are actually part owner of the property, you get all the benefits of owning real estate, like depreciation and tax write-offs. However, to invest in these syndications, you normally need a lot more money. They normally require a minimum investment of about $50,000 or more. However, you can get into these same deals through crowdfunding for as little as a thousand bucks. And what makes this option so attractive is real estate is a very low risk investment and you have higher returns than just bonds or mutual funds. Another alternative passive investment strategy is being a private lender. That just means you're lending money directly to an investor or someone that needs the money and you set your own terms. Most private lenders charge one point or a 1% fee on the total value of the loan and then 10% annualized interest each month. This type of lending is very common in real estate in flipping houses. Most investors get private or hard money where they borrow it for two to five, six months at a time so they can go buy a house, renovate it, and then flip it. The best part is, is the investor is protected by the real estate. They become the bank essentially and they get a deed of trust that shows that they're their first position lien on the property. What that basically means is if everything goes wrong, you can take over the house since you're the investor and then you can sell the house and recruit your money. So an example of this is if a private lender gives a real estate flipper $120,000 for a fix and flip project. They'll charge 1% upfront or one point. So that means at the closing, they'll get $1,200 paid to them and then they'll get 10% return on that $120,000. So each month that real estate flipper has to pay $1,000 in interest to the lender. And let's say the project takes six months from start to finish and for the sale to close, then the investor it would have gotten paid $1,200 upfront and then $1,000 for six months each month. So that would make them $7,200 on their investment. Now let's talk about the other side of things, the fast way to invest and really build up wealth and scale up. You probably heard the best investment is in yourself, but you probably wonder, what does that even mean? In my opinion, beside the obvious of health and wellness, I believe it means investing in skills that you learn to build a business that can generate income. Spend the time to learn a new side hustle or business through YouTube, podcasts, all for free, or pay someone for a mentorship to fast track your way to success. Either way, it doesn't matter. Anyone can invest in themselves and learn these new skills without spending any money. However, it's only an investment if you actually take the time and dedicate yourself to learning it. Buying a course or a mentorship doesn't guarantee success if you don't put in the work. Someone that actually puts in the work and is dedicated and just learns off free YouTube and podcasts will be more successful than someone that just pays for a mentorship in a course but expects everything to be done for them. There's so many ways to make money today with the internet 
from drop shipping, e-commerce, wholesaling real estate, day trading, crypto, that you just have to put in the time to learn your niche and then put in the work. The common theme between all these active investments is that it's something that's gonna require you to actively participate in and to work and build instead of just sitting back and being passive. These active investments will allow you to generate money that you can save up and later on dump into the safer and more passive investments that I talked about earlier. This is really the true way to snowball your wealth. That's what Grant Cardone does. He makes a lot of business from his sales businesses and then he dumps all that money into real estate and large apartment complexes. And you can easily break six figures in any of these side hustles if you put in the time and effort to dedicate to it. The best side hustle is anything with a recurring revenue, like monthly subscriptions, or the OG rental properties. You're getting paid every month with rent. Another example of recurring revenue is like a lawn care business or a pool cleaning company where you have customers that need their lawn cut or the pool service every two weeks. Another great option is online courses or online coaching as that's all online and there's no overhead to pay for it like a physical business. However, be real with yourself. The only way that works is if you have some sort of special skill or knowledge that you're really good at that you can share to other people. If you don't have any of that, there's no point in trying to start something like an online coaching business or online course because you have nothing of value to give people. For my active investment, I chose real estate. I started out flipping and wholesaling houses, but I now have scaled it to new construction, apartment complexes, and commercial real estate. It took me six years to quit my job with real estate and all started out with education, learning everything I could about the side hustle and then applying and taking action. I was listening to podcasts when I go to work, when I was at the gym, I would go to real estate meetups, I would try to learn everything I could so I can be successful in the real estate business. I stuck with it even when the times are tough and by my third year in real estate, I was making more than what I was making at my six figure oil and gas job. It won't be easy and it's gonna be a huge time commitment, but if you actually take the time and dedicate yourself, you'll definitely change your life and it'll be the best investment you can make. Things won't happen overnight, but if you start building a business and you dedicate yourself to it, you'll be surprised at what you can achieve in a decade more than you ever thought was possible. So in conclusion, if you're looking to invest, I'd say put all your money into investing in yourself and start an active investment in a business or side hustle that can generate you more money. Don't think about the slow passive investments for now because one, it's gonna take too long and two, it's only good to do those investments once you have plenty of income to actually grow and make a difference in your portfolio. Also remember to keep in mind all the risk associated with each investment and don't just blindly look at the returns that each investment is offering. The last thing you wanna do is lose your hard earned money in your first investment. So it might not be what you wanted to hear from this video, but if you only have a few thousand bucks to invest right now, invest that all back in yourself and start generating more income until you have about 20, 50, $100,000 that you can actually dump into bigger investments that are more safer with higher returns. Investing $1,000 right now is not gonna help or change your life in any way. 8% return or a couple bucks a month is not gonna do anything for your life. I'd rather you spend that money to invest in a business or side hustle that can grow and generate tens of thousands of dollars each month. If you learned something from this video or got any value out of it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more real estate and personal finance tips.